I've been getting complaints that this book oversimplifies things. So I'm going to put it down for a little bit and upgrade you. Today I'll be reading from the textbook, Modern Earth Science. Global Winds The circulation of the atmosphere, as well as the oceans, is affected by the rotation of the Earth on its axis. The rotation causes surface winds in the northern hemisphere to be deflected to the right, and those in the southern hemisphere to be deflected to the left. This motion is called the Coriolis effect, after the 19th century French mathematician who first described it. A ball thrown on the Earth's surface will curve only slightly due to the Coriolis effect. The ball travels too short a distance to be affected. The ocean currents and winds of the world, however, are strongly deflected. Winds that would otherwise blow directly from a high pressure area toward a lower pressure area are deflected by the Coriolis effect. Now I'm jumping to a different part of the book that illustrates things differently. It says about the same thing. The Coriolis effect is also a major factor controlling surface currents. The Coriolis effect is the deflection of the Earth's winds and ocean currents caused by the Earth's rotation. As a result of the wind belts and the Coriolis effect, huge circles of moving water called gyres are formed. In the northern hemisphere, the flow is to the right, or clockwise. In the southern hemisphere, the flow is to the left, or counterclockwise. A gyre is usually divided into four currents, based on the direction of flow. The big claim the book is making here is that the spin of the Earth causes both wind and water to move. Do you agree with that? Why or why not?